Phil Huber. Uh, yeah, so we didn't get a early PSVR of our own, but I, I, I did manage to go by and uh, check out some some games I, I honestly hadn't heard of. Uh, they're from a, a Chinese publisher called Oasis Games. Okay. They basically are, are like publishing uh, indie games. Cool. They're being developed in China. So four games, very different. Uh, I'll, I'll go through them real quick. Uh, there's Ace Banana. I which, love the name. Which is coming out at launch. Then there's Pixel Gear, which is coming out uh, like a week later. Weeping Doll, which is coming out right before Halloween. Sounds spooky. And then Dying Reborn, which is coming out like way later, like Dying January. Reborn. <laughs> yeah. Quite a name. Um, so each one I got to play like a level or or or, or less, uh, more or less. But um, Ace Banana. Yeah. You're you're basically guarding your your banana horde from monkeys. Fun. And you're using a bow and arrow to shoot the monkeys that are coming at you. Yeah. And so first person. Uh, yeah. Okay. Completely first person. And then uh, there are these weird. I don't even know whether it's right to call them power ups because some of them almost seem like power downs, or mm-hmm. um, like your arrows. They'll change from like this you know generic suction cup plunger kind of thing into like fish and then like onions and then I got some I got some power up that like just rolled a bunch of pandas down the track and like <laughs> rolled over everything yeah um, visually what does it look like it's real cartoony it's okay. real fun cool. um, and then there is like it, it, it's very blatantly goes in waves uh, so you get through a wave mm-hmm. and then uh, you'll see that like the next wave is happening like above you so you gotta like do the teleport thing like look at it and then zip up there are there multiple lanes you need to protect or yeah, is it just like your one banana stash you got one banana stash but you but got monkeys common. coming from all different so it's kind of like tower defense yeah anyway? cool basically cool. and then uh, once I got to the boss it was pretty crazy it was like this monkey in this like giant mech suit <laughs> doing all kinds of crazy stuff he was throwing like baby monkeys on my face <laughs> and so I'd have to like wiggle off the baby monkeys and, yeah. and all of that so uh, yeah fun little game probably I, I think all of these I, I think they're saying they're like maxing out at like 10 to 15 dollars what so a cool like, Kyle Bossman here tell me about the progression the progression the progression that I don't of know. Ace Banana on, on that, on that game levels? I don't know um, yeah <laughs> I don't know what comes after the Big Mac because I didn't defeat it, and we moved on to the next game. Cool. Uh, which was Pixel Gear, uh, which is very, in, in some ways it's similar, but it's a different visual style. Like everything just looks like old school, like almost Minecrafty kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You've got, but it was it was actually kind of appropriate because everything sort of felt Halloweeny. Like there was like skeletons coming at you, and they're like bats. And if you shoot the bat the right way, it'll drop a bomb on anything that's below it. Nice. And then there were these knights that you like. You shoot the head off, and then you shoot again to uh, to actually get the headshot. So you have to shoot off the helmet first. Mm-hmm. But then, like a couple of waves later, there were knights that were like, "Wait, I can't. Where's his head at?" And then I realized they were just headless knights. Nice. <laughs> that's fun. But they also had a big shield, so you had to like hit them in the right spot. That's cool. Um, and uh, so similar thing, tower defense. Yes, uh, that one though it does have a like a clear progression system because mm-hmm. when you get through like a wave of like the pixely enemies, then there are like these 2D ghosts and angels that start flying up, and so if you hit an angel, then you lose points. Mm. Um, but a lot of the ghosts will actually like hold like hearts and coins and things like that. I like that. It makes you like really watch your shot. Yeah. And, well, cool. it's, and But see, sometimes they'll like disappear too. Yeah. So like you go to shoot one and then you like waste a bullet because oh. he'll disappear right as you go to shoot him. Um, but then between rounds, then you can buy like a little submachine gun or a grenade launcher or something like that. Economy. Yeah. So you like got to save up the coins and, and decide do you, do you want a bigger clip or do you want another gun? Do you want a power up? Yeah. That one sounds really fun. And then uh, the the boss on that was this, this big like purple wizard. <laughs> And uh, it's just one of those things, like, it's, it's like a dumb thing of VR, where, like, any time that you have to look up, it's like, oh, whoa, kind of thing. Yeah, totally. Uh, so, yeah, so that, the, both of those were, were, you know, lighthearted, fun games. Uh, then we have Weeping Doll. Weeping and Doll. And this game, uh, it's, it's like a horror slash puzzle kind of thing. You're mm-hmm. exploring this house. And it's in disarray. Like we walked, I walked into the kitchen. How are the visuals? And and like, like the fruit was all moldy and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the visuals, it, it's weird because the visuals are more realistic, mm-hmm. but they're also like, kind of blurry. Like they were compressed in a way. Yeah, um, that's what I'm afraid of, Bloodworth. So <laughs> when you try to do those really realistic 
setting the tone, you know, you are here in this realistic environment. I, I like looking around the environment, but the movement in it is super weird. Because, you know, like a lot of VR games, like they're doing the teleport thing. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of like a teleport thing, but also a little different because what you have is like you have, like, like you're playing as this maid, like the house maid. Um, and then like you hear like one of the girls crying in the other room and you're like, you're just trying to figure out what's going on. The weeping doll. Yeah. And, uh, but when you move, it's like you move a silhouette, like a, a transparent version of yourself to, to like, the location that you want to be in. So it's like I move this, like I, it's like moving, okay, I want to be here. Yeah. And then you push the button and then like your first person is over there. So it's this strange, Does like, Does that come indirect. into like puzzle solving or can you be attacked when you're doing that or? Um, well, there's, I didn't see any kind of attacks mm -hmm. yet. It was like all just puzzles and atmosphere. But it was just, yeah, it was just this weird thing is, is like, okay, I'm, I'm basically like moving a 3D cursor to this point and then that's the next point I want to look at. Mm. So, a little weird on that end. Yeah. Um, Did there, it suck there, you in? There were some... Were you scared? I, I don't know that I had a chance to be scared because I just had a person over my shoulder, okay, like, okay. kind of guiding yeah. me through. And we were and some of the things were not working perfectly, you know, mm -hmm. so it was like, there's this thing where I had, like, put the creepy dolls together, and I was like, wait, am I doing it right? What's the control... Oh, that was the other thing. The, the first two games were using move controllers, and mm -hmm. this was using a dual shock. Mm -hmm. So that also made it a little different. Um, so, yeah, so... It has potential. Like, like I said, looking around the environment was, was cool. Uh, the other one was actually way more early. So early that I don't even know what kind of an opinion I can give on it at this point. Because it was just like, okay, I see what that puzzle was. Di this is Dying Reborn. But like a lot of it, like even stuff like my height in the game wasn't quite right. Yeah. Like I would walk into a room and I'm like, wait, I know I'm tall. <laughs> But I'm like way above the refrigerator. Like this oh, puzzles down here, and I can't quite see the like the icons on the controls. That's there weird. are some weird little things um, that I probably won't won't show. Just be curious. But uh, yeah, so it, it but it, it's a similar thing where it's like a puzzle horror game. Mm -hmm. Movement was totally different though, uh, and honestly, probably creepier than the game itself <laughs> because it's like you had movement with the controller. Yeah. But as soon as I, like, started walking forward because I wasn't actually moving, I, like, I felt like I was going to fall over. Whoa. It was this very strange yeah. sensation do to, you like, think, move an analog uh, stick forward and, and not actually be doing anything. Do you think PSVR is going to go that Wii route where there's just a ton of these indie, you know, 10, 15, 20 hour games that are just stock in store shelves that you've, like, never heard of? Just um, this plethora of games? Well, I think what it, you know, sort of like the Wii, it's like, I, what I, like what I'm seeing is like, people are just trying to figure it out. People are mm -hmm. trying to figure out what, what works, what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I, I kind of wonder if this game really would be, would make more sense because you are using a DualShock if I just sat on the couch and played it. Yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. what, what advantage am I getting from standing up? You know, it's like, I, yeah. I can look around in 3D and I can move and then quick turn with the controller yeah. So I don't need to, like, do more... Like, I don't need to do a full 360 or anything like that. I don't need to, like, reach out and grab anything like I do in a mm -hmm. game that uses a move controller. Yeah. So, yeah. And then I just kind of want to talk a little bit about, in general, some PSVR things. I haven't got a ton of time, obviously. But, the like... And this goes for all of them, but having glasses and trying to get into VR... Yeah. ...has been, like, this pain that I've had to deal with. Yeah. Because, um, like... Like with these games, like, okay, I put it on. It's like, oh, yeah, that, that's great. That feels way better than when I did the Vive. I did, like, I just got, had it locked in place. And then, you know, we took it off. We changed games. And then I put it back on. I was like, oh, wait, no, I lost the sweet spot. Where is it? You know, and then, or, like, putting the thing on my face, like, somehow, like, some l residue from somebody else's sweat, like, gets on my glasses. And, like, I have to wipe my glasses off. Yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of crazy. Uh, but I do think that the... Uh, the hand tracking and stuff with the move. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think I heard, like, Kyle comparing it to the Vive and not liking it as much, but I, I, I felt like it was fine. I was able to, like, look at the guns and things like that. Cool. And I felt like things okay. were more or less where they should be, mm -hmm. so. Um, oh, the other thing that's a little weird is the box. Like, everyone's going to have to figure out where to put the box. 
Yeah, here we go. You've got, to, you've got to plug the HDMI into it, mm -hmm. and then you've got the cables coming out to the headset, and then you got to plug that thing in somewhere. Yeah. So. I need like more outlets in my house. I mean, it's not as I'm much as room. like screwing things into your wall with the Vive, but yeah, yeah, some stuff to think about. Totally. But uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get to check out some more PlayStation VR stuff very soon. Early days of VR, Bloodworth, the Wild West. Right. <laughs> <laughs>